Charcuterie boards are trending on social media, and for good reason. They're pleasing to look at and even more satisfying to eat. But how can you accomplish these Insta-worthy displays that will wow your guests? Well, joining us now to help you step up your party game is Charcuterie Director from Columbus Craft Eats, Evan Inada. Evan, thank you so much for joining us here on Live in the Bay. Very exciting. It smells delicious. Oh, thank you for having me today, Olivia. I'm excited yes. to be here. Let's dive into these charcuterie boards. Now, when you hear charcu charcuterie, you think entertainment, small bites to eat, good for parties, right? So what exactly do you do in the style of charcuterie to make it easier for people? Yeah, you know, so charcuterie, it's perfect for any occasion, really, because it's mobile. You could take it anywhere. You could set it up beforehand. But the most important part is you don't have to be a chef to build a beautiful charcuterie board. Mm -hmm. All the hard stuff flavor-wise is done for you by the artisans before it even gets to your grocery store. So what you have to do is just pick up some meats and cheeses that you really love and then just pick the accoutrements, the acid and the crunch and the wow factor to just really support and elevate the board to look as beautiful as possible. So what we do um, and prefer doing in terms of building charcuterie boards is focusing around perfect charcuterie bites. Ah, so okay. just single flavor combinations that just really bring that wow factor of flavor, but also are very simple enough to remember grocery shopping wise and then also building on your own. So we just have a few different examples that we have on the board that we could go through. Yes, of course. Let's walk through some of these here. This one in front of me looks pretty gorgeous. And like you said, you've made it to where very simple for me. Let's walk through this first one. Yeah, so we have just three separate bites all built onto one beautiful board. Just make it easy for every eater approaching the board to just pick out something that they love. And the first bite that we're going to go with is called our uh, Parisian picnic. So French are the ones that actually started the charcuterie movement to begin with, really just highlighting and showcasing the art of making salami and meats mm -hmm. preparation-wise as beautiful and tasty as possible. So we really wanted to give an ode to um, that original build using our Rosette de Lyon, which is our French-influenced salami that we have right here. We're using a little white peppercorn in this salami. Oh, that sounds and delicious. Salami is extremely important on choosing the right salami to build a charcuterie board because mm -hmm. it's really that flavored bridge that brings everything else together. It has that dry aged goodness. We've been doing um, salami in San Francisco since 1917, actually. We started right in North Beach, Little Italy, right down the street from us. Oh my gosh, so amazing. just slow age all the way through. You can see that beautiful um, kind of meat to good fat ratio right there. Yes. And as you choose a salami, you're supposed to taste all that beautiful umami flavor. And because it's dry, I cure it all the way through, you continue uh -huh. to chew it. So that way you're able to grab a piece of cheese and grab a fruit or a, something that's a little crunchy and just build these beautiful layers of flavor on each bite. Amazing. So, so we start with the salami. Here. The salami is the first and most important step. Exactly. Right? You always <laughs> got to start with the salami and then you choose the perfect cheese to just kind of elevate that partnership. So what we're going to do here, Rosette de Lyon, and this is a mimolette cheese. So it looks kind of like a cantaloupe, so perfect for summertime flavor. You just uh, split Put this in half and just start kind of digging out the little chunks uh -huh. but it's actually a uh, french style cheese very similar to kind of like if you think of parmigiano for um, italian aged cheese yes, yes that aged goodness and umami that has the same qualities in mimolette but it's uh, orange yeah. so it looks like a cantaloupe almost so we're just going to get a little shard of mimolette with that Rosette de Leon, and then all you need is a blueberry. So feel free Amazing. to try I'm that I'm gonna try together. this. We got the cheese yeah. and the salami. Let me give this a taste real yep. quick. And that meat and cheese relationship is always the most important part of the charcuterie mm. bite. Mm, mm, mm. So you get all that great flavor. And then that you just- That is delicious. Oh, thank you. And then you just finish off with a simple blueberry. You top it off with the blueberry. That's all you need. Because just a little bit of sweet Why acidity. Why the blueberry? So acidity is extremely important in building a charcuterie board. So you want to have that little slight acidity to cut through the good, combination of meat and cheese mm. to just kind of cleanse your palate just enough to fully enjoy that bite and get that, that extra That was amazing, Evan. So that very, very simple. <laughs> very, very fresh. Yeah, very simple, very fresh, and easy to build as well. If you're talking about just presentation-wise, having half of a, a wheel will serve a good 20, 25 people easily, or mm -hmm. who knows if they're big cheese heads, maybe just three like or me. four people. Like me, I'm yeah. a big cheese head. Maybe just us on this one. <laughs> okay, so after this part, and then we have yep. the cheese, and then we add the fruit, mm -hmm. what's the second part of this? Because I see a lot of deliciousness going on in this board. Exactly, so the second part is gonna be our little North Beach bite. So this is again the Ode to Little Italy. Um, so that's where we started, right on um, Broadway Street was our first factory. So what we're gonna do is take the finocchiona. This is our largest diameter out of the salami, right? 
right here. Mm -hmm. We're actually using wild fennel seed in this and then slow aging a good almost 90 days. So all we're gonna do is fold this in half and I'm gonna just twist it up so you get a nice little ice cream cone. This ice cream cone is gonna be filled with just a little bit of the burrata cream. So just a tiny bit of burrata and we're gonna get a fresh little cherry tomato for again that little bit of acidity to just cut through all that goodness. And then what are you topping it off and with? And then right here, normally we could go fresh basil leaves, but let's go a little bit special here because it's summertime, you always wanna be the coolest <laughs> kid on the <laughs> block. Love it, you know, little caviar. Here. This is actually, everybody, a lot of firsts here on Live in the Bay. Yeah. This is my first time trying caviar, so it's gonna go with the little meat, cheese, and cherry tomato we have. Exactly, and it's a basil olive oil caviar. Okay, well so here we go, cheers. Cooler. Yeah. So that's really, we call that the North Beach bite because mm. North Beach Little Italy, it's best at really just showcasing everything great from the motherland. So we're talking burrata, finocchiona, just mm -hmm. all tied together with the nice produce that we could find all and over And it the place was here. really delicious. I get a different mix of flavors there. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have to try the third one before we run out of time. So what totally. is this third step? So the total third step is something fun because you, it's all about presentation. So having that pineapple right there, we're from the Bay Area, so we get inspired a lot by Bay Area flavors. So we have pineapple here, a little mahon, which is from Spain, and then we're just wrapping our hot capicola, which is our uh, spicier kind of cooked meat. Mm -hmm. It's a little pork shoulder. So just like that wrapped and then you put it in the bowl itself. This is perfect for the outdoor occasions on charcuterie because you could grill this. So I would oh. just put this on the hot grill, let that kind of flavor. With the uh, pineapple coming through. Pineapple coming through mm. because Bay Area, it's all about that melting pot of culture. So this, so when agree. you eat it like this, almost tastes like an al pastor oh, uh, wow. in terms of flavor profile. Okay. So once we're done with that, you just kind of put that right there and then it's ready for the picking. And then you have all your three uh, perfect charcuterie bites all on one board and really all the board building is done for you that way. Mm -hmm. And then all that's left is the wow factor. So I left a few different options of crunchy things like nuts, uh, little corn nuts. We have gooseberries with the um, little wrapper still on it. We have the pomegranates, dragon fruit. All of these are aesthetically pleasing. So yes. I want you to pick your favorites to just fill out Ooh. the rest of the board for the Okay, bunnies. you know, I'm gonna go with pomegranate because I love pomegranate so much. I love pomegranate seeds. I think Very that these would color-wise look really nice maybe out here in front totally tell me if i'm tripping no no you're doing but a I great think that job that looks really good okay you're doing fantastic so far maybe add a crunch and yeah. i love pistachios so i'm gonna go with pistachios yeah. here super simple adds a little bit of color very nice um maybe up here yeah That'd be beautiful. I think having that extra little, the husks are great for the gooseberries right, right there because you could Perfect. put that next to your little rose salamis. Okay, and make so it we'll bring this little back little a little bit and more. then maybe add some more here. Yeah. And look at this. I appreciate you allowing me to make this come together. Look at yeah. how beautiful. All right, amazing. Well, thank you so much, Evan. Final thank tips you. and tricks for people who want to make a beautiful charcuterie to entertain in the summer? You know, it's all about the flavor. You want to have fun with it, make it fun, and make it personal to you. So of course, so which is wonderful. Say. If you make it personal, people can taste that love that you put into it. Well, thank totally. you so much, Evan, for joining us here on Live in the Bay. Thank Learned you. a lot about entertaining and charcuterie boards. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Of course, if you want to create these bites for yourself, we'll have a link to all of the items on our website at liveinthebay.tv.